Hello there. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you how you can use a caparator curve command in Fluid Designer for 3D printing um, to make, uh, in this instance we're going to make pendants, but I mean you could make them as earrings. Um, so something similar to the ones that are shown here. In fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a little bit more clever than that. I'm going to create one that looks a bit like this. Um, I'm going to personalise it by putting the letter A onto the uh, pendant as well so um, finished product would be could be done in silver or brass or bronze that kind of thing um, but we're going to just personalize it all right so if I just do file a new okay so the first thing I'm going to say is uh, I'm going to use um, one of these wire connectors append this to our object um, I'm going to use these bezel settings um, now the default thing in uh, Fluid Designer, if you buy our software, is uh, it comes with a ring, but we're just going to use this object here, the bezel ring round. Um, we're going to uh, append the um, round gem as well as part of our work, uh, and we're probably going to append some of these bezel ring cross sections, in other words, the depth and thickness of this bezel ring. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, and oh, and I'm also going to use uh, a Harrington font. I'm going to use a letter A. I'm actually probably going to use the capital letter A. Okay, so if I just go to File and New, um, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag and drop one of the default pendants, and these are actually in the free version of Fluid Designer, just onto the workspace. So I get these cross sections here which I'm going to use as part of the work. Now I don't want to use any of these objects here so I'll just switch on screencast keys and you see any key presses I make down here. So if I press the A key on the keyboard to select all those objects and press X on the keyboard I can just delete all of those. Now this workspace area here is about 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters, so that just gives you some idea of uh, the size of the uh, finished product, uh, in this case a pendant. So what I'm going to do, well I'm going to add a curve and I'm going to use a caparator curve. And so that's what you get. Um, now the thickness of this object at the moment by default is 1 millimeter thick. 0 0.5 is the radius here so it's 1 millimeter thick. If I set this down to 0 you'll see what the raw curve looks like. Now if I press the tab key on the keyboard uh, to go into edit mode this panel will disappear but the 180 is what I want to focus on at the moment the 180 is the number of control points around the object here now for the purposes of this exercise I don't need 180 so I'm just going to delete that and add the curve again um, once you go into edit mode this panel will disappear so you just have to recreate it so I'm actually going to set this down to about 30. That's enough control points for what I'm going to deal with. And um, I'm not going to change the height and the scale just at the moment. What we're interested in now, oh, I'll put the uh, bezel back in as 0 0.5 so you can see the thickness of this. Now, we can now change the P and the Q values and get different shaped objects. And we can play around with this until you get a pattern that you're happy with and you can see that uh, you can change the scale here so I'm just dragging with the holding down the left mouse button and dragging it so I can change the scale there and I can change the height of the object there but I'm, go I'm going to keep that back down at five now if you want to know the total uh, dimensions of this you can always go to the uh, properties panel and you can see that that's 60 by 60 which is probably a little bit large um, but you know there are other ways in which we can change this. Um, now another factor to take into account with the caparator is this value for rounds. If you change the rounds notice that the pattern also changes here. Quite often when you do add curve you want rounds to be one, not, so, not in this instance. So if I set it at five there, so that's, um, that's more or less what I'm going to use, I think, in this case. But you can play around with these numbers as much as you like. Now I can press T on the keyboard to close this toolbox panel down. And if I just go to View and Top View and uh, go to Main Information here, I can see that this is 60 by 60. 
Now that's a little bit too big at the moment, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the S key on the keyboard to scale, and as I move the mouse in, I can bring my size down, and I'm going to bring it down to about 24 millimeters. So you can see that it's now fitting on my grid there. Now whenever you scale a curve, this object is a curve in Fluid Designer, it will resize the scaling vector. Now you must set this back to 1, otherwise you won't be able to use these bevel objects here accurately in Fluid Designer. Alright, so you must always do Control A on the keyboard and apply the scale. And when I do that, watch the thickness change. That thickness now is one millimeter. It wasn't a second ago after you'd scaled it down. It was actually probably about 0.4 millimeters. Now, I don't want to use a round thickness here. I'll just press T on the keyboard to close the toolbox down again. Um, I don't want to use a round thickness here, I want to use a bevel object. So this is a parametric uh, curve here, and we can change the thickness. So I've changed it to one by one at the moment. Let me just open up this panel a bit more. Um, I could change it to one by two, one by three. So that gives it some depth. So it's one millimeter by three at the moment. I'm actually going to set it at one by two. Okay, so... Um, We've uh, rescaled it, and this size here is the real size of this object now, only because we did Control A and apply the scale. Now, if I go to View and Top View at the moment, if you look at this object, and uh, it's not kind of symmetrical here, but if you look, if you were to turn your head sideways, you can see that it is symmetrical about this line. So, one of the things I'm going to do now is I'm going to rotate this. So if I go to main information here, I'm going to rotate it about the z-axis, so I'm just dragging it with the mouse. And if actually, if I type 90 degrees there, the z-axis is going into the screen, and I've just rotated it about the z-axis 90 degrees. And what that does is, as I'm looking at it now, the object is symmetrical on both sides. Now if I want to set this back to zero, I can always do Control a and a Oops, control A and apply the rotation and notice that sets it back to zero there. You don't actually have to do that in this instance. Um, now, if I want to give this a bit more depth to make it a kind of uh, look a bit more like a flower when we print this, um, if I go into edit mode by pressing the tab key on the keyboard and if I press C on the keyboard to select and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the control points around the edge of this uh, object. Um, am I going to select that one? Yeah, I think I'll select that one and that one. And then you press the escape key on the keyboard to cancel that. So I've selected the control points around the edges there. And if I go to view and front view now, if I just pull those points up, and if I just tilt it, you can see what I'm doing. I'm creating a hollow in the center of my object there. I'm just pulling up around the outside of the uh, what will be a pendant. All right, so I'm going to do that. Now, if I view it from the top again. Um, now, another thing I could do is I could change the shape of this. Instead of having it round, if I press the tab key again to go into edit mode, and if I press the A key on the keyboard to deselect, so A selects all the control points and A deselects. And if I press C on the keyboard for the uh, circle select, and if I just select those two control points at the bottom, and then press the escape key to cancel that, I can actually pull these control points down. Notice there's a circle there as well. Now that circle is the proportional editing circle, and if I hold down the left mouse button, and scroll the center mouse button, notice that more of the curve, either, either a small part of the curve or more of it, whatever's inside the circle will move. So I could adjust the shape of my object to be something like that. And when I'm happy with the shape, I can press the tab key on the keyboard to come out. Now that clearly has resized it, so this is now 38 millimeters long. So you do need to take that into account. Now, um, 
I'm going to personalize this by putting a letter A at the bottom of this and I can do that by um, using as I showed you earlier uh, a Harrington font so I need to go to the patterns alphabet Harrington font folder and I, what I do is I go to file and append and you always go up through the menu system in Fluid Designer until you get to the groups folder and then I go to patterns alphabet Harrington font and you can select any letter of the alphabet but I'm going to use a capital letter A and we always append the object um, we don't want all these cross sections we've got that so we just want Harrington font A and we just append that from the library um, now make sure the object is selected properly with the uh, yellow around it and you can then reposition that so I can just drag that down uh, and I can drag it up until it's in a suitable position. Now I do remain, need to remember I'm going to put a gem in the middle here um, so um, maybe I want to just scale that down a little bit so if I do S on the keyboard for scale and just uh, scale it down a little bit now remember when you do that you must always do Control A and apply the scale and as you do that notice the thickness will change just slightly now this is also a parametric smart object so if we go over to here you can see this is one by two I could change it to one by one I could change it to two by two which looks pretty awful I could change it to one by three um, so uh, you can change the thickness of that to suit um, I'm going to set it at one by two okay so you've got to be sort of happy with the location of that I'll just perhaps move it down just a fraction more um, now what I'm going to do is if I go to view and top view um, I'm going to put uh, a gem in here and uh, as I showed you before I'm going to use a gem from one of, with a bezel setting and I'm going to use the round gem so if I go to file and append just go up through the menu system gem settings bezel round object now there's a lot of uh, objects in here I want bezel ring round which again I showed you earlier and I also want the gem which is just called round I don't want the uh, ring I'm not making a ring here I'm making a pendant um, I will come back in a minute and add some of these bezel ring cross sections as well from this same uh, file so if I just append those from the library so what I've brought in is I've brought the bezel ring and I've just brought a round gem now they're obviously at the wrong angle at the moment so if I just press R on the keyboard X on the keyboard in 90 that will rotate it 90 degrees and while it's highlighted if I go to cursor and snap selection to cursor it will put it in the middle of the screen for me and uh, I do the same with the bezel ring so it's R X 90 to rotate it 90 degrees and just snap the selection to the cursor um, so I now need to adjust the height of this and pull it down into the pendant there and uh, I just need to pull up the uh, round gem now the height of this bezel and the thickness of it is going to depend upon the gem that you have and you will need to know that uh, and what you've got in the background here now you can see that um, we've got the background pendant here and we've got a height here so you would have to play around to make sure that the um, gemstone that you have would fit inside here and the bezel will still fold over. Um, if you want to change this bezel, we don't have actually, sorry, we don't have any um, bevel objects here at the moment other than bezel ring cross section 4 by 0.8. In other words, this is 4 millimeters high and 0.8. If you wanted some to change the thickness of this if you just go to file and append we're already in the bezel round one so we could for example choose these ones or if you've got suitable printing equipment you could use 0.6 millimeter thick so I could select a few of these objects here uh, and append those from the library so that's brought those into my uh, file here that I'm working with and so what that means is I can change this bezel ring here from 4 by 0 0.8 I could change it to 2 by 0 0.6 I could change it to 4 by 0 0.6 
The exact dimensions of this are going to depend upon A, your printer. Will your printer print at 0 0.6? If you're using somebody like Shapeways, you won't be able to print that thin. You'll have to use 0.8. Um, if you're using a more sophisticated uh, system, um, you may be able to print at 0 0.6. So I'm going to set it back actually to 0.8. Um, and I'm going to assume that the gem that I've got when positioned there will be suitable based upon how it will fit on the background of that object there so um, and oh I forgot to mention you can measure the height of this here you can measure the height of that as two millimeters or whatever it is and you can adjust this accordingly you may need to switch off the snap to do that if you want to fine-tune the height all right so um, what, what, finally, what do I need to do now? Well, um, I don't need my gem, so I'll press X on the keyboard and delete that and assume that this uh, bezel ring is in the right place. All I need now at the top of this is a connector. So if I go to File and Append, um, just go up through the menu system until you get to the Groups folder. And I'm going to use a connector, and I'm going to use a 2.5mm diameter hole connector and uh, I just append that object from the library so there's my connector now I want to change the cross section of this this is also a parametric smart object I'm going to change it to one by two because this is one by two and what I want to do now is to position it at the top here so let me just go to view top view whoops made a mess of that didn't I view top view and uh, Okay, if I just switch to wireframe mode, I can just see where the position of that is. Now, I've got my snap off at the moment, so I can fine-tune the position of this. So, I want it about half in there. So, I just go back to material mode. If I just view from the left now, you can see the height of this needs adjusting. So, I need to pull it up to, up to there. And uh, again, if I go into wireframe mode, you can see where that is. Um, now sometimes with this, yeah, that's okay. That's that's fitting okay. Sometimes you may need to modify that slightly. You may need you could change the thickness and make it uh, one millimeter thick if you like. Um, yeah, actually, I'll do that. I'll leave it like that. So you can see that that's just fitting in the top there. Um, if you wanted to rotate that ninety degrees, um, you could do. Um, you could rotate it 90 degrees and have it facing like that if you like better to type in 90 than leave it at 91 so you could angle it like that I'm going to leave it like that okay so those are all the objects that I need what we need to do now is to join them all together well before we join them together we need to convert them to meshes so convert that to a mesh convert that to a mesh Convert the letter A to a mesh. Convert the ring to a mesh. And if I hold down the shift key now and highlight the connector, highlight the letter A, and I've got the ring highlighted, if I do tools, object tools, and join them all together, and then if I hold down the shift key and highlight the pendant as well and join, so what I've done there is I've just joined all four together. So they're all one object now. The only thing I need to do now is to export this. Um, I like to use Wavefront to the desktop. And I'm just going to call it Pendant. Uh, export it to the desktop. Okay, so that's saved it to the desktop. And with everything in Fluid Designer, you must go to Netfab Basic and run it through Netfab Basic. So if I just open the uh, pendant object, um, you always need to repair it with Netfab. You get some uh, minor border edge problems and a few minor tiny little holes, but Netfab will uh, fix these for you. And the reason that this works so well is you're using curves in uh, Fluid Design and there. So you can see we've got a warning red triangle, but we just hit the repair procedure. Uh, and uh, if I just click update, you'll see there's some edge problems and some holes. That's not serious. 
if you've got orientation problems then you uh, you are you do need to go back and modify your object again so when I click update you see they're all set to zero so you apply the repair and remove the old part and there it is so there's your um, Kappa Raider curve pendant I've personalized it with the letter A and uh, this one will actually take a 10 millimeter round gem but we could have resized that as well so we just uh, export this as a pendant and just save that and that's the file that's ready now to be sliced so that's how, that's how you can create a personalized pendant in fluid designer for 3d printing using the Caparada curve thank you